The current conflict between Israel and Palestine is the fifth since 1948 and its consequences have been catastrophic. So far, at least 1,400 Israelis and more than 3,750 Palestinians have been killed. Most analysts predict the conflict will escalate further. What's less tangible now is what this will mean for markets both in the region and globally. On the one hand, Israel is relatively accustomed to sustained periods of conflict, but this one may cost it its credit rating and its currency stability. On the other hand, and the situation in Palestine was already dire before the fighting started. Gaza's 70% unemployment rate and Palestine's very low GDP per capita have contributed to the region's stagnation for over 10 years. But what do we know so far? How have international markets reacted? Well, the price of oil, or the black gold, has shot up 8.2% since October 7th. That's off the back of concerns about disruptions to global supplies after Iran called for an oil embargo on Israel. The US, the world's biggest oil consumer, also reported a larger-than-expected inventory draw, adding to already tight supplies. European gas prices have been climbing over the past week. Dutch TTF's price soared 47% to an eight-month high of $59 per megawatt hour. The price has gone up more than 50% in a month now. And gold prices hovered near a two-and-a-half-month high this week as escalating Middle East turmoil that buoyed demand for the safe haven asset alongside the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. Let's get to more on this uh, with Taha Meli Arvas. He's a professor of finance at Boazici University, and he joins us now from Istanbul. Thank you for being with us, Professor. Um, right, so uh, let's start with th this oil embargo point. Uh, what would an oil embargo on Israel mean for global markets? We also know that the US has been planning to ease Venezuela's sanctions to allow more oil to flow uh, globally. How will all of this affect uh, oil prices? Well, I think I don't think there really will be an oil embargo uh, on Israel. I think that's that's rhetoric out of Iran that Iran probably doesn't believe itself. Um, as far as oil prices, the larger question is what will happen uh, in lands that have oil? Um, will there be a potential uh, conflict in Iran or uh, in the region where all this oil is is uh, is located? Um, that's going to have a major impact. And I think to address that concern and other concerns that the United States currently has with uh, ability and access to uh, uh, crude oil. Um, these steps have been taken to help Venezuela bolster their exports of oil, specifically to the United States. Uh, as a result, I think the, the, the price of oil really will depend largely here um, on these developments, because right before th this happened, really, we, we were in a, uh, a time, in a period where oil was, was looking to potentially decrease because uh, one of the largest importers, China, uh, is, is, isn't is back to where it was pre-pandemic. Um, so as a result, uh, this conflict may spill over into oil markets. Um, I think traders are currently uh, weary of that and, and afraid of what that might mean. Uh, and so we see this this uh, increase uh, in oil in recent uh, in weeks. Um, but we'll see, obviously, what happens from here. Interesting. And another potential crisis unfolding because we've seen natural gas prices in Europe soaring over the past few weeks, uh, as much as 47 percent. Uh, should the bloc be worried uh, before the winter? What's going to happen? Right, but very recently, the bloc wasn't worried. Uh, much of Europe's stocks were, were practically full. They were prepared for the winter. Um, colder than expected weather. Uh, really threw things off. Um, uh, I think uh, in recent years, we've had very warm, mild winters in Europe here, um, but we, we've begun to see a colder than expected uh, winter in northern parts of Russia. And I think Europe is afraid that that will continue. And if this winter is a much colder one, then we'll exp experience problems. Obviously, the conflict um, in Israel, in Palestine, <laughs> is one which is causing uh, uh, investors and uh, importers of gas uh, to fear that the supply lines for natural gas, uh, both in pipeline terms and in, in, in liquefied uh, natural gas, may be um, uh, uh, in jeopardy. And as a result, we see this, this spike in natural gas prices. 
Right, and, and Taha, Taha, a question on the Israeli economy itself. First of all, do you think Israel is in a way uh, more accustomed to these uh, sustained periods of conflicts? But if not, uh, there's a bit of a trade-off that the Bank of Israel is now having to face between essentially wanting to stimulate the economy uh, through lower borrowing costs, but also trying to keep the shekel stable through higher borrowing costs. Uh, what's the trade-off at this point? I mean, there is a trade-off, but, but we have this other uh, major impact, uh, exogenous shock, if you will, potentially, um, uh, to is Israel, in that uh, Joe Biden, um, uh, the President of the United States, has mentioned, has floated this idea of, of raising $100 billion of funding um, Israel and mm -hmm. has tacked on Ukraine as well to that. So if, that's, if that funding uh, goes anywhere to help not only um, uh, the war machine, frankly, but also to bolster the economy, to uh, you know, sustain. I, I'm sure if the Israeli central bank uh, calls the Fed and asks for you know, tens of billions of dollars to help their economy, I don't think that, that, that's going to be a problem for them. Uh, Janet Yellen herself came out and said, we, you know, we're okay with running two wars at the same time, which was shocking for uh, a former Fed official, now Treasury Minister, uh, Secretary of the Treasury, to say, but all this means that Israel shouldn't have a problem um, as far as their uh, their currency goes or, or their economy in general, because there's such a large uh, amount of money waiting to be uh, injected into it if it needs to. Um, so so that, those concerns, I think, um, aren't, aren't founded on that only because it's not a very, uh, we're not talking about regular market conditions. We're talking about uh, this large sum of money waiting to be injected into the economy.